What's up guys, welcome back to a new video and in this video I want to explain how to trade indices uh, and basically going over my, my view on this instrument and also telling you how I trade it and how you could trade it as well. So let's get started. All right, we start with a risk disclaimer basically stating that I'm not a financial advisor and this is just my view for educational purposes only. All right, so when it comes to indices, it's really, really important to think about if you're going to be trading or investing. And why is that important? Because you have to determine what your goal is of indices. Indices are generally used to invest in for longer term so not to actively day trade of course there are people day trading indices and swing trading it but the general public is known with it as a, an index you invest in for the longer term such as the s p such as the nasdaq so step one would definitely be to determine what's your goal do you really want to be actively trading in these instruments or do you just want to basically make a return uh, equal to the market equal to the s p because if that's the case and if you don't want to really actively develop an edge and develop a trading strategy in in indices then the best way to benefit from indices is to simply find an index fund that follows one of the indices you like and invest in it monthly and hold it for the longer term with other sides i assume most people want to trade uh, in the C, so let's dive into the next sheet. Few points I want to talk about, and it's playing the bias. Now, if you look at any major indices such as the S and P and the Nasdaq, what really stands out is that it uh, basically over the long term it's going up. Uh, and why is that? It's because it reflects the best companies of America, and that's partly reflects the economy and the economy is designed to keep growing and to keep becoming better to keep innovating etc basically to keep the system running and to keep it keep it improving so there is a bullish bias in these indices if we quickly look at a chart of the s p and we zoom out look at that of course there are these dips as you can see corona stuff dip so there are dips there but overall the trend is up and there is a bullish skew to the s p and i like to play that skew i like to put all the odds in my favor um and it basically means i'm only looking for long setups in the s p now that might be a bit riskier for, to some people in my opinion it's just common sense and putting the odds in my favor of course you can look for shorts as you can see there are some drops there that you can benefit of but in my opinion to make the game easier i'm looking for longs on the s p but also on other indices the other important thing to think about is liquidity in those uh, indices and liquidity is one of the basics that i use in my trading if you're familiar with it you probably know i trade a mechanical strategy that is based around the concept of liquidity so i like to analyze uh, areas of liquidity and of course if you're going to trade indices you need to have some kind of entry setup that gives you a bit of an edge now recently i've been developing a strategy in indices and oh boy it performs so 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 well still in the testing phase but definitely going to run it live this year uh, and it performs way better than my strategy in fx in fx still profitable but i do trade a breakout strategy and fx has been really ranging quite a lot lately so uh, I started looking and testing different instruments and what turns out is that my uh, performance in indices such as the NASDAQ and the S&P is just way, way better. So transitioning more into trading indices. But if we take a look at a chart and what stands out to the behavior of the S&P is steady up move, 
V-shaped drop. V-shaped drop, V-shaped drop, bit of a steady move, V-shaped drop, steady move, V-shaped drop, steady move, V-shaped drop, steady move, V-shaped drop. You get the idea, it goes on and on and on. Even if we go back, it's usually a steady move by followed by some kind of V-shaped drop. Of course, this was a massive drop. Uh, but if we then look at what happened before that massive drop, you can see the same thing happening again. You got this steady move, V-shaped return. Then we got a steady move again, recover or uh, retracement, then a bit of chop, then a steady move, V-shaped return, steady move, bit of return there, and again. So that's basically the behavior I want to see in the S&P, and that's the behavior I play. So what I always look for in the S&P is I highlight liquidity below market. And uh, last week, this was the most important area because of this triple bottom. That's usually where liquidity is. As you can see, price fell into it, rejected, and we're now violently moving up. And these are the areas where I look for longs. And this is where you want to be looking for your entry setup. The same thing happened here. You got this decently important low before this massive up move. You got this, uh, this low over here. Once again, price dips into it and then does this. And here again, you got this low formed similar to this area. Price falls back into it, quickly rejects, and off we go. Same thing here. Multiple lows that haven't been broken yet. Again, this area. V-shape into it, and off we go. It's usually the same thing. So what I do is pretty simple. Um, I have a mechanical strategy that I run, which is kind of based around this concept, but a bit different. If I would trade this in a discretionary approach, I would always highlight these liquid areas of liquidity. So for now, this is the area, but let's say price does this, uh, follow some double bottoms there. I'm going to highlight the double bottom, wait for price to dip into it, look for a similar reaction like we had here, and then would look for an entry setup in that area to go long off. And that's basically it. It doesn't have to be very complicated when you are trading indices. Most people try to catch every move. They go to the M15 and look for an entry there. And then I don't know what everyone is doing, but just keep it simple. There is a bullish bias in the long term. I swing trade it because swing trading fits my lifestyle, personality. And the odds of success are a bit higher. I identify liquidity based on how the market, in particular this market, behaves with these V-shaped returns over and over again. And then I look for my entry setup at these areas of liquidity. And that's it. So I hope you really learned something from it. It might not have been uh, something that, uh, that you expected. But... Just keep it simple. You don't have to keep it, uh, make it hard for yourself. Just find an entry setup you like that has a bit of an edge. Look at the right context. In my case, it will be liquidity below market being absorbed and just play the bias. And of course, when interest rates go higher and things start to change in the economy, you can see massive dips in the S&P and you can see bonds going up or I'm not getting into these things, but and then, of course, you can look for shorts. There are certain times when getting out of uh, an index in the shorter term is a smart move to do, uh, just like we've had here. But in general, um, I invest in this index, buy and hold. I buy every single month a piece of the index and I hold it and I trade it, the swing trading approach, also playing that bullish bias. So that's my approach to trading indices um so yeah hope that was clear so in short playing the bias looking for longs analyzing liquidity and using an entry setup that gives me an edge that's how i do it i trade the s p i trade the nasdaq i don't trade us 30 because i haven't tested my edge there yet which i will be doing in the future for now if you like this video please leave a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel. More is coming soon. Also in the description box down below, you can find a link to a series I'm doing with BlueFX. 
Uh, we're basically building a free course on YouTube where you can learn step by step how you can build your own edge, your own trading system. And it's 100% free. And I haven't seen any course like that on YouTube for free. So if you are interested in that, click the link down below and watch session one, two, three, four, five. Session number six is coming out probably the coming week. So stay tuned for that. And I hope you enjoyed it and speak to you in the next video.